And now, another interview with Grandma Hicks, who's going to tell us the story of this picture that she made herself. Do you remember when this picture was made, when you made it? I must have been at art school in the 60s. Yeah. Um, because I, I was using the, the colours instead of paint. And you said, I think you were wondering what about the um, frames. Oh, yeah. I was wondering who framed them. Well, you see, I, I have this wonderful friend called Billy the Boon, mm -hmm. and he had one of my paintings. And you see, I what they're made on is, you know, or oil paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a canvas stretched. Yeah. And you have these stretchers, and you have to tap the thing that stretches into the corners. Mm -hmm. Well, because I'm a bit, a bit miller, I think you call it. Um, I made, I did one lovely picture. I think it's the one Billy the Boon's got, actually. The swan? I think it's not this one. It's one of a, a swan getting out of the water. So you've got other yeah. little watery species bottom bits. Okay. Rather nice, actually. But when he came, I said, well, yes, yeah, Billy said, okay, I'll, um, now I'm going to frame it, says he. And he came to me and he said, Jude, he said, this is a nightmare. Do you realise that? It's 22 inches, 22 inches, 22 inches, 23 inches. Oh, no. <laughs> now, think what that would be like, making a frame. Well, Billy the Boon, luckily, is a very cunning fellow and very keen at fiddling around with um, wood and things, lovely <laughs> things he used to do. And he actually made this frame, 22, 22, 24. So you can, the angles in that were quite... So this is the one? So this isn't the one that's got that okay. frame there. Billy's got that. He kept the painting mm -hmm. for his, all his war troubles. Oh, OK, yeah. I don't know if he's still got it. And um, but that one, you see... Now, wait a minute. You say, why did I do it? I can tell you it was 1966. When was the flood in Florence? Actually, you can work out what day it was because I was 21 and the flood was while I was 21. Wow. So someone was clever at maths and worked with that. Yeah. You were born in 1945? Yeah. So, 1955, 1965, you were 20, 1966, you were 21. So that's when the flood in Florence must have been. So I escaped from my job in Turin looking after children, which I did love, but it was nice to escape. I said, I've got to go and help in Florence as an art student. Mm -hmm. um, I've been an art student and um, we can do, you know, mending things. Mm -hmm. There's a spider. Oh, that's my friend. Um, do you want him? I'm all right. I'm just, I don't want it to call on you. Well, it won't even tickle because it's so small. As long as I don't squash it. Um, so when I was in Florence, and it was an amazing few days because I was, they sent all the college people home and then moved in the old ex art students like myself mm -hmm. to do work. And so, I, you know, was, we had great fun. We'd work hard all day. Washing mud out of every every book it had mud in between every page. Oh my god! And you had to do it with. How did you even wash books? Well, exactly how indeed. So you can't use water. Hmm. So we had to use spirit. You know, white spirit of some sort. The alcohol. Yeah. Hmm. And and so your hands awful for your hands. But never mind, we had great fun because in the evening and at night we'd go off exploring, really, around Florence. It was extraordinary. Well, that's all right. And so you heard all these stories when you were there, and I heard about when it, when it flooded, um, there were some um, uh, uh, racing stables and mm -hmm. the horses were getting, uh, getting drowned. Oh, no! So that picture is actually of a drowning horse. So sorry about that, everyone, but, um, and it's sort of looking down on it in the water. Yeah. That one did actually escape, I think, of course. 
Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah. I was working for the Pavillon de Persani family, Persano family, looking after the three children. Well, like a nanny? Yeah. Mm. And at first, the little boy looked like me. He wouldn't drink to me. He was only about two and a half. <laughs> and so there he was, lumped with this awful person. So I carried him everywhere, and he was scratching at my arms like that. And so I just kept going. Oh. And then one evening, the other two, Oppo and Rodolfo and Christ Christina, um, Titi and Oppo, the brother and sister, and then little Luca. And um, so one evening, it wasn't long after I, I arrived, he was sitting in the, on the floor. I was trying to get him to bed. And he was sitting on, 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 on the floor, and so I sat down sort of opposite him. And he threw a slipper at me. <laughs> so um, I picked it up and threw it back to him. Yeah, he it at me. go Grandma Can you imagine, hit. Can you imagine what happened? <laughs> He threw it back at you? Yeah. And then like, he just... He threw it at me. I threw it back to him. He threw it at me. I threw it back to him. And you then hit, what happened, do you imagine? You hit... You threw it at him. Knocked him out. No, 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 I didn't. <laughs> he started laughing. And so we both laughed and for after that we were friends. No, yeah, that's a nice story. Yeah, the other lovely story about Luca and the others was that when Simon, your grandpa Simon, mm -hmm. um, came with me, we went to Italy, I can't remember why. Art, I suppose, some sort of sculpture. Right? And um, we, so we travelled up. I think we had, oh, no, don't tell Jono, this is terrible because we left him at home, he was too little. We took, we took the others and um, we drove in our van up the hill I said, oh, we must go up to Sestriere, which is where it's now, it was only a village when I knew it, when the, the Sanos lived there. Mm. And um, we must go and see if we can see anything, you know, see where the houses are. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's all become huge, you know, um, ski resort. But on the way, driving up, there was San Sestriere, and Sestria, that's right, I think San Sicario was even smaller village. And as we were driving along, there was a boy, a youngish boy of 16, a 15 year old boy, sitting on a stone with his satchel. And, t and Simon said, That's Luca. I said, Does Simon have only ever seen photographs of Luca when he was three? Really? And he recognised this boy. So I went up to him and said, Um, um, so, oh God, my Italian's awful, but I, um, conosce le persone, familia persano, and he said, si, si, sono Luca persano. And then really? and so we said, and so we said again, I'm not going to go on Italian because I've forgotten my Italian. <laughs> it was never very good at this. Um, and, um, we gave him a lift down into town where his school was. Really? It was so lovely to see him. Did oh. he remember you? Well, not really, I shouldn't think, no, because he had various pers various um, senior seniorinas, we were called. Um, the other thing about going to, um, I'm speaking Italian, was going, when I went to Florence that time, mm -hmm. um, I talked a lot of rubbish and a lot of Italian. And when I came back into Torino, mm -hmm. they said, oh, you, oh, you're posh, aren't you, in, in Italian? Because I had the Tuscan, I think it's called, well, Florence, which is the very upper class um, accent. Oh. Well, la, 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 la scena is la scena. So everything is sort of slightly like that. Mm. And so there I was speaking Porsche in Italian. <sighs> so that was all funny. But, um, well, you might not think it's funny. No, I like you it. You do? Oh, okay. no, I don't. 